in the pickup truck. <laughs> Ready to haul some loads. So I got a hit on some wheels. I'm just gonna have to buy a set. I'm gonna have to change it. I have put those wheels up for trade or sale. I'm gonna have to just change it to sale because I'm going to buy some wheels. Uh, I found a nice set of black GMC. Um, it'll be elevation wheels. They're 20 inch wheels. Uh, pretty nice. So, and they're takeoffs is what they are. So they're pretty new. So everything's in them. So they're just gonna be bolt on. And I know a lot of people were like, why don't you keep the fuel wheels? Those wheels are not gonna pass the R title inspection, let alone, I just, I don't like them. I don't know, it's just not my style. Uh, the bigger wheels like that, I, on a lowered truck, yes. But for, for me, I like a, a nice beefy tire. And these ones I'm getting have some, they're, they're stock, but they're like BF Goodridge, real nice tire. So, um, <laughs> They're in Frederick, Maryland. So we're going to go get some sugar shine while we're down there. <laughs> and yes, uh, this is actually before we started the porch, we got rained out today. If you haven't noticed, it's raining. So I'm just going to go get this done and uh, get back. Maybe we can bolt them on the truck and see what they look like. And if you didn't notice, I got the airbag, which was $500 used, but that was shipped to my house. So, oh boy. Um, headlight was 300 and something and that's an aftermarket headlight but it looks identical so that driver's side headlight looks good but it has a hole punched in it about that big so it's uh, that's a no-go I know you're probably thinking why didn't you take the truck listen worst case Ontario I have a I had a roof rack that was on that Lexus and I put the front bar on as it fit the second one I can get between the rails up there but I can't get it to clamp onto the car. So worst case scenario, I'll put the second bar in, put the tires down on it, strap them down to the sidebars, and uh, we should be good. But I I think the wall fit in here, to be honest with you. I don't know. Guess we're gonna find out today. Can you fit four 20 inch rims with off-road tires in the back of an Impreza? This is gonna be impressive. Like a glove. <laughs> so if you wanna know if you can fit some 20 inch boggers in the back of your Subaru, yes you can. In fact, I can even put this seat up a little bit and then they won't even touch. Yes. And then there's a liquor store right here and they sh he says they should sell Sugar Land Shine, so we're in luck, boys. <laughs> Gonna get some. Wouldn't you know they didn't have it? So off to Hagerstown, apparently there's some places there to have it. If not, we'll go home without it. I don't care. Oh, the parts, they're coming. But I need to get these bad boys on. They look really good. This one looks wore down a little bit more, and I think that one does. These, That one looks fairly new, and that one looks fairly new. So they're going to go on the back. These two are going to go on the front. This is exactly what this truck needed. These wheels are perfect. They fit the fitment. 
perfectly lined up with the body because they are factory wheels off of GMC, which is the same exact truck, basically. This, I don't know if we're going to get this one. I'd like to get this one. Got a new tail light because the one tail light's cracked. Um, this cavity wax, I'm going to shoot this through the whole inside of the frame. And then I got these nozzles. Uh, this is like a fogger. I guess this makes a fog come out and you stick these long tubes inside the frame. Now, yes, I use wool wax, but my nozzle doesn't work the best, the one that I have. So uh, I figured I'd try something else and these look promising and had good reviews. You have to buy these separate, these applicator nozzles and they have jets on the end. So hopefully that works. New headlight. Um, still haven't sold these yet two of these tires are like brand new the rest of them are not quite brand new but off camera i started peeling tin off the the lights and we did that i didn't get the i need to get the uh fog lights down in the bumper get the tin off of those i fixed the stereo it was cutting in and out this sub system in the back and uh one of the wires was just not in the amp plug where it was supposed to be it came loose so I went, got back in there, fixed some wiring, and uh, no issues there now. Got the grill emblem off. I need to clean it up a little bit, but it's in decent shape, so we will use that. I started messing with this hood some. I'm just not really getting anywhere with it yet. So I need to get some. I need to get some more force on it. But we are going to be using this hood um, temporarily. I might just roll with it the way it is. Like I said, I want to get this thing inspected, so I might just slap this bumper on. Uh, when we get the grill, slap it in. We're going to have to disassemble some stuff, obviously, but throw a light in, throw the tail light in, and, uh, we, oh, the airbags. I do got to get that done. So, uh, first thing I really need to do is get these seat belts out. That and the crash module. So, the retractors are in the pillar here. I think there's a pillar there. Yes. And, uh, as you can see, they pulled tight, so I pulled the, the trim off, but... This one's loose. This one's locked loose. That one over there is locked tight, and it's going to be hard to get. I don't want to cut the straps because I don't have to buy a new strap. I've seen videos where people were like, just cut the strap. No, no, don't just cut the strap. But now that I put these wheels on, we're going to have to program these wheel sensors. And I got a new code scanner, and this thing is the best product I've ever gotten on this channel. I'm, I'm so thankful that... Like, this is the best part about YouTube is the stuff that people send you. It's like, you can pick and choose what you want. And, like, I, like I'm like i getting good stuff. <laughs> so, I'm like, yeah, send me that. This thing is awesome. And I got to do a dedicated video on it. So, I'm just going to use it right now. And then we'll uh, get more into it now. But it's like a freaking, it's like an Android tablet. And it's Bluetooth. So, let's program these sensors. Another cool thing is the dongle for this. It tells you your battery voltage right on it whenever you have it plugged in pretty sweet look at this thing by bi bi-directional controls uh, it, I think I can do like tire programming too and these tires are bigger I might have to program my speedometer we'll have to see yes so see we have tire upgrade TPS reset which is what we're gonna do right now then we might do the tire upgrade and that should calculate our speed and stuff all right, so I did it myself. You put it on the tire gauge thing and then um, hold the check in until the horn beeps. Now I gotta go get my sensor thing and hold it up to the tires and hopefully it works. Oh my God, it's in learn mode. So let's, let's try it. I don't honestly remember which one it is. I think one of them is just strictly GM and then one's for like all vehicles. Let's see. Battery might be dead in this one. Yep, battery just died on that one. Let's see. Well, both my batteries are low. I don't know if I have another 9 volt. So, let me go look. Well, I don't think we're going to be doing that today. Because I can't get it to work. <laughs> One eternity later. All right, so I haven't touched that truck yet. We're weeks into the porch here. I want to show you this. I've been getting a lot of packages like this lately, okay? For this truck, even. Every package has been okay up to this point. 
I have not opened this one yet. I just want to show you how beat this is. And look how smushy this is because of how much has been beat. And look at this side with the fragile, you know, please handle with care the hole in the package right here. This is how I got it. This is um, like how many boxes were stacked on this. I know this is part of that grill piece, so uh, we'll open this up and see how this looks. Thankfully, this looks like it is undamaged. This grill, okay, there's three pieces to this thing. Okay, I got a whole bunch of parts, okay? Just having you know, I got that new deflector on the for the front. Whenever we get the, the hood done, I'm going to be putting a new one on. Um, bumper pieces, tail light, headlight... Here's one, another grill piece. Here is the grill. I went aftermarket. This is a lot cheaper than going original OEM. I got myself a pneumatic, uh, kind of like a block sander, a planer. <laughs> I'm going to try it. I don't know. We'll see how that works out. I got a bunch of sanding paper. I got a bunch of stuff up for this, okay? And... I'm doing a lot more work to this than I originally planned. Right now, off video, I'm going to take these wheels back off to put the tire pressure sensors out of those wheels into these wheels. And then I also, which I know was probably bugging the crap out of people when you saw me put these on, is I got GMC caps on there. So I ordered Chevy caps for these. I'm going to do all that off camera. I want to show you the progress on the porch because... We uh, just finished the framing today, me and my father-in-law. Yes. Nice. This is going to be a nice hangout spot. All right, so here's what we just got, which is the back piece right there that's shattered. So that piece goes in, I think, just like I have it. And like that. Then followed by this piece which is like a shield or a surround and then followed by the grill which also gets those pieces in it and then i have to wire those lights up and the main reason why i say i'm doing more work i just this i was gonna just line the bed up but i did find out that this bedside was replaced this is a new bedside i think it was just recently done they did a good job except for the paint but where you can see when you open this up so here you can see the factory spot welds in that look over on this side where did they go where did they go and i can also see just a little bit of like you know sanding or whatever but they did a really good job on it to be honest with you where they screwed up is either which I don't think they did. I was going to say either they have it in too far. Where I think they messed up is they just didn't line it up. What they did, you look at the body lines. They have this perfectly lined up with the cab on this side. On this side. Look at that. Does that look perfectly lined up? No. We're about we're a little bit over a quarter of an inch sunk in also when you look at the tire you see where i'm at here pretty close to the edge look at the tire on this side look how sunk in that is from the other side so what i was gonna do was just loosen the bed and shift it and then you know tighten it back up the more i thought about it i'm like you know, I did this on my other truck. It was not bad to remove the bed. I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove this whole bed. We're going to lift it up. I am going to re-clear this side of the bed as well as probably the door too. But we're going to take the bed off and I'm going to coat everything underneath. Check the frame and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to coat the top of the uh, fuel pump. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna make sure that this thing's gonna last me for a while. So wool wax I've found lasts a little bit longer than fluid film, at least in my experience I think it does. So I'm gonna wool wax that the whole underside of the bed while I have it up, 
and then I'm gonna do the frame and everything. Then I'm gonna set it back down. We're gonna even up the measurement there on the bed. We're gonna have it so we're even and not shifted to the driver's side. And we're gonna fix that and then I'll re-clear this and everything. And But today, I think for education purposes, well, first I'm gonna do these wheels and this is gonna take me a while. But when I get back, I'm gonna tear this front end off and we're gonna see what the damage looks like underneath. So this is honest to God, the first time I've even put it up this high to look underneath it. I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. Like, you'll see rust, okay? Like the front struts are probably at the point where I should think about replacing them. But besides that, um, it looks like the, they had to replace a boot here at one point because, it, you know, that's slung grease. But besides that, I mean, this thing's in really good shape. You'll have some surface rust in some areas. Normally, as you get back the truck here in Pennsylvania, you get back behind this cross member, it normally starts going south really quick back here. My truck right now is fairly rusty underneath. This is minimal <laughs> at most. Even the bed, like my bed supports under my bed don't look very healthy. And uh, that's why I want to treat this thing now while it's still in decent shape. And this is why I want to show you. This is a, the new bedside here. I can see right there some uh, spot welds that they did do that are kind of compromised. So we'll have, to, we'll have to clean that up. But yes, right there's some tape. And there's your spot welds up through there. You can see somebody did. They didn't do a bad job on putting this bedside on. I don't think it looks bad at all. Right there, there's a G, it's a GM bedside because there's a GM sticker. So, yes. And then I can see how they sealed it up top on this side. A little bit different looking in there, but yes. They did, a, they did a decent job. Right here's some of that sealant. Yeah, that's really good. That's the good stuff. This is why the wheel wells rust out on these. They're wide open. And then when you're driving down the road at a high rate of speed... The salt vapors and water vapors go up in there and then set in that lip up in there. So what I do on my trucks is I get that fluid film and I put it way up in there and I coat the inside of this thoroughly up in there. And your bedsides, my bedsides never got any worse after that. Um, one thing I do kind of want off my old truck is I have an aluminum rim under the for a spare. So I might change this one out. The hitch... Is in really good shape on this one although this is like is this like the one i have no no this is factory i have an aftermarket class 4 hitch on my truck man the rear bumper must have been replaced some brackets everything looks brand new for the rear bumper i think they replaced that rear bumper i'm gonna have to say that's a that's a yes yeah that's nice the rear bumper is brand new <laughs> no one had to worry about that rusting anytime soon but yeah, everything, even the hangers and stuff, everything looks pretty good. The extra wiring, I don't know who did it, but it's got to go. It goes up into the bed up there. It looked like they must have had lights, sound activated. Two volt control box, sound activation. Yeah, that's got to go. Look how crusty this plug is. It don't even unplug. It's, it's crusted in there. Yeah, good job, guys. I think I already unplugged this fuse up top. I'm just going to chop all these wires off and uh, might leave a little bit in there. But for the most part, they're just going to get removed. Got the wiring down out. What I could get for now. I observed a nut missing on uh, one of my manifolds. So I replaced that. As you can see, that's one of those uh, crimped ones that are like a lock nut. They go on tight, but yeah, so I replaced that this side. Everything looks good on this side. I don't see anything missing So I come back. I'm looking at exhaust. This flex pipe has seen better days As you can see We may still put an exhaust system on this. I don't know yet right here is the clamp. It's seen better days So that clamp would have to be replaced right here's where I'm lost when you have somebody put an exhaust system on they did a good job back there and there's some tight clearances look at this like look at that that is tight it's not touching 
But couldn't you have uh, made that a little further away? Anyways, so then they put smaller pipe on than the factory pipe, as you can see here. Why would you do that? If you want good sound, you want a good sounding exhaust, keep your exhaust at least a stock diameter. If not, go bigger. You get a deeper sound and you have more pipe. And then I just observed forklift damage. This is definitely forklift damage right here and right there and see the fresh marks on those that is fresh from the forklift nice so i'm going to try to straighten those out the best i can but uh that's really not going to hurt anything but that's just what you get when they lift, load you with a forklift Some of you would probably be shocked, but the door sticker in this thing shows that this truck came with 22-inch rims on it that were the same exact size as the tires that are over there, and they were closer to a 31-inch. This is a 32-inch, so this is going to be a little bit bigger, so the speedometer is going to be off just a tad, but not much. Like at 60 mile an hour, it says these should be about 61 and a half. So it's really not that bad. Um, and another reason why I could not program these sensors, which I still have three more to do. Here's what came out of the GMC. If you look at it real closely, it is 433 megahertz is what the signal is on that. And what would have been on this truck originally and what was in those other wheels are 315 megahertz. So that's why I couldn't program those sensors. We shouldn't have that problem now plus these are the ones that came off the truck so they should already be programmed except for i'm gonna to have to recalibrate them so that it knows exactly which tire it is so i'm gonna finish this job up and then we can tear into the front end i also want to note i i ordered factory gm lug nuts because these are the splined ones and i don't like them and they're open the factory ones are capped so they cover the stud and they're black so they'll match so although that took up most of my evening they're all in and they're all programmed now to program these you don't need a special scan tool or anything like that you do need one of these you can get these on amazon for like i think they're like 13 to 16 bucks but you go up into the gauge cluster you go to your tire pressures hold the check button until it says relearn then you go around and you start with this tire now i've already done it but hold it against the tire where your valve's at hold the button in and the horn will beep and then you go from that tire over to this tire same thing same thing and in the back corner and after you do that back corner it'll beep twice in confirmation that they are all programmed so if you are into the GM vehicles, this is a nice tool to have. Now they have ones that do multiple vehicles, and I have one of those too. I haven't found that they work on everything, but this one right here supposedly does the same thing and will do multiple vehicles for certain years. And I have had it work for certain vehicles, so it might not work for everything, but for certain ones. Now I need to pop the hood. I was just inside the truck. It's hard as crap to get in there right now because of the post why didn't i not pop the hood <laughs> probably wouldn't be so hard if i'd lose a little bit of weight oh. Come on.
pretty pleased with all the more damage there is. I am not replacing these horns. I'm going to straighten these back out. That just needs folded out. Same with that one. Um, the core support itself needs to be pulled on this side. Not very much. It moved the fender back, okay? Whenever, and you can see this little bit of a rub right here. It made the gap tight. Well, if you look at it right here, as you can see, it kind of pushed this core support back. If I pull this, which it didn't really even bend anything here, but if I pull this, it should pull this out and pull the fender out. It's got the fender, as you can see, got a hump in it right there because it pushed it in. If I pull one out, I think that's going to fix that. We've got some chips in the paint over here. I, if it doesn't fix this issue after we pull it, I'll loosen the bolts in the fender and shift the fender a little bit for, forward, and we'll fix that. And you can see we have adjustment here, too, as well. So on top of that, there's a metal piece that bolts to this, and it slightly bent it right here which I think I'm gonna be able to straighten out. Seriously, all of this, I think I'm gonna be able to fix myself. So we're gonna straighten this out. I got all new plastic pieces to go in here. I think the bumper brackets are gonna be fine. I can straighten those out. I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with those. Um, everything on the bumper, I think I can reuse. The only places this really got bent is right here in the center. I had to unbolt that. That just gave me enough play to get the bumper out because it was kind of wedged in between the frame rails there. So once I get that, <laughs> honestly, then I'll, I'll have to throw everything in this bumper, but I think it's going to be just fine. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, looking to be a very smart purchase on my part. And uh, we are not saving the horns. The horns are going to go. I did I did think about saving the horns, but I, I'm not going to at this point. Uh, I'm going to cap off the power wire to it. Uh, we will, I think, utilize the airline thing. I'm going to route it so I have a connection somewhere in the front bumper. I don't know where I'm going to do that yet. I haven't decided. I want to make it so it comes right out where the tow hook's at. No, because it'll get a bunch of dirt and junk in it. I'll just wrap it under the hood. But in order to pull this, I'm going to have to get the truck out of the garage, turn it around, do that. We're not doing that today. Might do that tomorrow, which will be the next episode. Really thrilled with this. Really, really, really thrilled with this. As you can see, I did, uh, I did this off camera, but I tried beating these in a little bit and then pushing up on the hood. And I did get a little bit of play out of it, but still just not enough. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. This is an aluminum hood, so I don't really want to go cutting it because I can't weld it back together because I don't have an aluminum. I don't have a spool gun for my welder, which I could go get, and then I'd be able to weld this back together. I don't know. I don't really know yet. I can get in this fender. Very good now, right here. Through here. I think I might just go ahead and uh, try popping this stuff out. Oh, these fenders are hard. So, yeah, I'm going to have to use a hammer and dolly. But let me try to pop this out real quick. I know what you're saying that looks like heck but you know what that's going to require a lot less putty than what it did in fact i wouldn't even use that much but that would have been way too much putty to use on uh this fender and you can see it's still got a slight dent down through there i think we can shape this i, I still have a little bit of hammering to do it this needs to go in right here uh but uh for the most part that came back out now i'm gonna have to hit this inside of here with some uh primer to make sure we're you know protected up here now but i'm gonna be able to save this fender and i'm not gonna have to 
paint this whole thing. I can paint to like right here and then blend it. Uh, but then we're just, we're clear coating back there. I'm not changing the color back there, just clear coat. And I just spent some time pretty much with the adjustable wrench and uh, straightened those horns out like as straight as I could get them by eye. Then I took th this bracket was the worst one, hammered on that for a while and got it to where I have it now. It's not completely perfect, but it's really close. And the other one over there looks really good. This one looks like it might dip in a little bit. As long as my bumper brackets line up, when I go to put that bumper on, there's lots of adjustments here. You have the whole bracket to adjust. This has so much adjustment in it, like a lot. You, these three bolts here, <laughs> there's so much play in that to adjust it where you want it. Same with these and down there. Uh, you just get everything lined up the way you want it. You don't like it, you have adjustments that you can get it to line up better. I worked this a little bit more too, which doesn't look too bad, but that's something we're gonna have to work on a little bit more, I can see. Uh, I don't know if I can't get this to look perfect when I'm done, I might end up buying another fender, but for right now, this is what we're gonna roll with, and I'm gonna try to make it look good. But yeah, guys, that's a lot of progress for one day. Pretty happy with it. I mean, just tearing it apart is not bad, but uh, I have everything here. Next episode, I'm probably going to get this core support pulled out, and we're going to test fit the whole front end. And then, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I need to work on that hood some more. I just noticed this got kinked a little bit, too. You don't notice it on top, but I'm wondering if that ain't what's holding me back. This, uh, Well, it's only kinked on one side. Huh, that's weird. So anyways, if you like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing, drop me a comment, let me know if you like this rebuild. Maybe you want to see more like this. I can't really afford more like this, but maybe you do, and maybe I can do something in the future. I don't know. Hit that dislike button if your mom needs me to do some PDR on that ass. See you in the next episode on Wrecked. You ready to hang out on the porch? Hmm? Yeah, Miss Diva over here, so dramatic. Oh, let's stretch it. What are you doing? You're gonna follow me now, because I pet you. She follows me everywhere as soon as I touch her. How you doing? You wanna say bye-bye? No? Okay.